In today's video, I'm going to do a walkthrough of the math no calculator section from the October 2020 SAT. I've scored perfectly on back-to-back -back SAT math sections, and as I go through this section, I'm going to show you the most efficient way to answer each and every question. So with all that being said, make sure to like and subscribe, and let's go ahead and get started. So if we take a look at question number one, it says Tobias rented a kayak from a sports equipment store. For the rental, the store charged $60 per day plus $25 for delivery. If Tobias was charged a total of $325, for how many days did he rent the kayak? Well, we know that his total cost is 325. We subtract that $25 for delivery, and that's gonna leave us with $300 divided by $60 per day. So we take that 300, divide it by $60 per day, and that's gonna leave us with the number of days he rented the kayak, which we see will be five. So our answer for number one will be B. All right, moving on to number two. Which of the following is equivalent to the expression above? First thing I'm gonna take a look at is my 2xy squared. I see I'm adding 3xy squared to that, so that's gonna end up giving me 5xy squared. Next thing, I've got a minus four and I've got a plus four. I see that those are gonna cancel out, so my answer C and D will be incorrect because there should be no constant um, with no x next to it, right? And then next up, we take a look at our 5x uh, versus a minus 5x. So we're gonna have a 3x plus a negative 8x, so 3x minus 8x, 3x minus 8x will leave us with a negative 5x. Therefore, our answer will be 5x times y squared minus 5x, which will be answer choice A. So B will be wrong. Our correct answer for number two is A. All right, moving on to number three now. The function f is defined by f of x is equal to three to the power of x. What is the value of f of two? f of two just means that we are plugging in two for the value of x, which means that f of two will equal three squared, which will equal nine. So our answer there is gonna be answer choice D. All right, moving on to number four now. We've got a graph. It says the graph of f is shown. According to the graph, what is the value of f of zero? f of zero is our y-intercept. We see our y-intercept occurs at negative eight, so our answer there is gonna be b. All right, moving on to number five now. So we've got the function h is defined above for what value of x is h of x equal to negative two? Well, in order to solve for this, we just gotta plug in that negative two for h of x. So we'll have negative two is equal to negative four times the quantity x minus one plus two. Now from here, I'm gonna go ahead and subtract two from each side to get all my constants on my left side. Now from there, I've got negative four is equal to negative four times the quantity x minus one. From here, what I can do is I can divide each side by negative four, and when I do that, I'll have negative four over negative four, which I know is gonna equal one. So I'm gonna have one is equal to the quantity x minus one, and from there, what I can do is I can go ahead and add one to each side. I can just go ahead and remove parentheses at this point. When I add one to each side, I'm gonna be left with just x, and I'll have x is equal to one plus one, which I know is gonna equal two. Therefore, x is going to equal two, and my answer there is going to be d, since I wanna solve for x. All right, moving on to number six now. So we've got an equation up top. It says the equation above expresses some temperature, but right away, I'm actually seeing when I glance down at my answer choices, I'm just rearranging for r here. And that's gonna be verified by reading my last sentence in my question, which says, which of the following expresses the temperature in degrees Rankine in terms of the temperature in degrees Celsius? So to do this, what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna multiply each side by nine fifths to get, my, get rid of my fraction in front of these parentheses. Now, when I do that, I'm just gonna have a r minus 491.67 on my right side, and I'm gonna have a nine fifths times c on my left side. Now, from there, if I take a look at my answer choices, I can go ahead and get rid of answer choices c and answer choices d because they have five ninths in front of c, and I need to have nine fifths. Next thing I gotta do is I gotta add 491.67 to each side in order to isolate R, okay? Now at this point, I've gone ahead and I've isolated R, so I know then that R is going to equal 9 fifths C, and then I also have to add in that 491.67, and when I do that, I see my answer choice then is going to be answer choice A. All right, from here, let's go ahead and move on to question number seven. So we've got a geographer found that the land area of Aruba is 75 square miles and the land area of Bermuda is 19 square miles. Based on these data, the geographer used the equation 75X plus 19Y equals T to estimate the total number of residents T of the two islands. What is the best interpretation of X in this context? Key thing we need to recognize here is if we use canceling units, we can make sure that we are getting this question correct right? We know that we want the value of t on that right side of our equation to be the total number of residents. Now, we're given the fact that Aruba is 75 square miles. So in order to get our total number of residents on our right side, we also have to make sure then that our 75 miles of land, which I'm just going to mark as mi for miles, getting multiplied by our variable x, we have to cancel out our miles and be left with the total number of residents. So to cancel our miles, our denominator is going to have to have units of miles, and our numerator is gonna to have to have units of total residents. So as we can see, we're gonna have total residents 
per square mile, right? And keep in mind that it was 75 square miles, so I should have put square miles, so I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, it's not really gonna matter that much because we had miles in our numerator and our denominator here. So boom, 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 and we see we can go ahead and cancel out our square miles, we'll be left with our total residents. So therefore, our units then must be total residents per square mile, which is the population density in residents per square mile of Aruba. Keep in mind, it's Aruba because we were given that, that 75 is in front of that X, which is 75 square miles of Aruba. All right, moving on to our next question. We see that that's gonna be question number eight. So what is the sum of the solutions to the given equation? In this case, first thing I'm gonna to look to do is factor, and I see that I can. When I factor this out, I'm gonna end up getting X minus seven times X minus five. As you can see, that'll give me X squared minus 12X plus 35. Therefore, my solutions will be X equals seven and X equals five. Now from there, I need to add those together since I need the sum. We know that seven plus five will leave us with 12, so our answer there is gonna be answer choice C. All right, moving on to number nine. Number nine, I can go ahead and actually answer in less than a second. I know my answer is gonna be five eighths. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I did this so that you can do this next time you see this question as well, or a question like this. Because if you know how to solve number nine here, it's gonna save you a ton of time if this question ever comes up on your SAT. It says, in the right triangle ABC above, the sine of angle X is five eighths. What is the value of the cosine of angle Y? So how did I know immediately it had to be five eighths? Well, if we take a look at our sine of x, we know that the sine is our opposite over our hypotenuse. So if we take a look at our opposite, we see that it's gonna be this side here, which I'm gonna mark in orange. Okay, it'll be side AC, and we see our hypotenuse there is gonna be BC, which I'm gonna mark in green here. Now, if we take, at the, take a look at the cosine of y a minute, okay, our cosine of y is gonna be our adjacent over our hypotenuse. So we see right away our denominator is gonna be the same. Now, our numerators will also be the same because the adjacent to angle y is also that side length a to c. So therefore, we know that the sine of x, which is equal to 5 eighths, is going to equal the cosine of y. So we can go ahead and write that down. The sine of x will equal the cosine of y, and I'm gonna put in a right triangle, okay? In a right triangle, okay? And keep in mind that this is where x and y are not our 90 degree angle, okay? Where they're not our 90 degree angle in our right triangle. They have to be the other two angles. All right, so that's a key thing to recognize on your SAT math section. It's going to save you a ton of time. As you can see, I was able to answer that question in less than a second because I knew right away what the answer had to be. All right, moving on to number 10 now. In the XY plane above, if point F not shown is placed so that the triangle ABC is similar to triangle DFE, which of the following could be the coordinates of point F? All right, key thing I want to understand here is that my point A corresponds to my point D, point F corresponds to B, and so on. All right, so from this, I see that going from A to C in my smaller triangle, I'm going up by one and I'm going to the right by three. I see in my triangle below it, which is my larger triangle, I am going over by, let me redraw that line a minute. I see I'm going over by six and I'm going down by two. So I, as you can see, I'm doubling, right? I'm doubling my lengths. So to do that and find our new point F, what I see is that, and I'm gonna put this in orange so you can differentiate it. You can see that I move one to the right and I move up or away from A and C and on the y-axis, I move up by four, okay? So I'm going over one and then up four. So I wanna do the same thing from point D, but I have to double that. So I'm gonna to go to the right side by two and I gotta go up by eight, okay? I've gotta go up by eight. So I'm gonna count this out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? And I also see, I'm gonna erase this a minute so you can see my points here. I see if I'm going to the right by two, then that's gonna end up getting me at four. And if I'm going down by eight, that's gonna end up getting me at negative 10. So my points here are gonna be four and negative 10, which will be answer choice B. All right, so moving on to number 11 now. We've got which of the following values of Y is the solution uh, X, Y to the system of equations above. All right, this one, there's a ton of different ways that you could solve this. I'll just show you one of them that I think is really simple and really easy. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and solve for x and I'm just gonna plug it into this top equation. So to solve for x for my bottom equation, I'm just gonna go ahead and add y to, each, or I'm sorry, I'm gonna go ahead and, yeah, I'm gonna add y to each side. And when I do that, I'll have y is equal to 2x. Now to solve for x, I'm gonna divide each side by two and I see x is gonna equal y over two. From here, I'll have then y is equal to, and I'll go ahead and substitute y over two in for x, and then I'll have plus three. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and subtract y over two from each side, subtract y over two from each side. Now keep in mind that y minus y over two is equal to y over two, right? We've taken away one half y from y, leaving us with y over two then is going to equal three. From there, we, all we gotta do is go ahead and multiply each side by uh, two. So we've got y over two is equal to, I'm just gonna go ahead and erase 
part of this. I'm going to put this in orange so you can see it's my next step. I've got y over 2 is equal to 3. All i got to do is multiply each side by 2 then to solve for y. And I see then that y is going to equal 6. So my answer for number 11 will be answer choice D. Now there's a ton of different ways you could have solved number 11. That's just one of them. I think that that way is fairly simple. All right, number 12. The function a of t models the number of liters of a fluid in a tank after t hours. Which of the following models the number of liters of fluid in the tank after n minutes? Key thing here is all we're doing is changing the units of time. So we see that hours was represented by this exponent t. Now, if we're switching this to minutes, keep in mind, nothing is changing with how quickly this um, tank is filling up. The only thing that's changing is our units. So what we need to keep in mind here is that one hour, which we're representing as t, all right, let me rewrite that. I just put a j, okay? One hour, which we're representing as t, is going to equal how many minutes? Well, it's going to equal m minutes over 60 because at one hour, we would need that to equal 60 minutes over 60 minutes, right? We have to make sure that that conversion is right. Now, keep in mind, m is representing our minutes here. We see that m then has to be put over 60, so that 60 over 60 gives us that exponent of 1 for 1 hour. As we can see, then our answer choice here is going to be a, right? b, c, and d all have the incorrect exponent. So 12, answer there has got to be a. All right, moving on to number 13. In the equation above, k is a constant. If the equation has exactly one solution, that's a key part to answering this, which of the following could not be the value of k? In order for there to be only one solution, we know that they have to have different slopes. Or, yeah, they've got to have different slopes, right? They can't have the same slope. If they've got the same slope, there's going to be infinitely many solutions because they also have that same y-intercept of plus 8. Okay, so what? Uh, which of the following can it not be the value of k? Well, k can't be 3. If k was 3, they'd be the same equation. They'd have infinitely many solutions. So our answer for 13 is C. 14, how many solutions does the equation x times the quantity x minus 4 equals x quantity x minus 1 times quantity x plus 1 have? All right, so I'm going to show you how you can solve this one pretty simply. So what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to distribute your x to your x minus 4 first. That's going to end up giving you x squared minus 4x. Now keep in mind that you also are going to have to uh, do that the FOIL method on your right side of your equation. So x times x, and you've got to keep the equal sign as well. x times x is going to give you x squared. Then you'll do x times 1. That's going to give you plus 1x. But you're also going to have minus 1x, so your x term will cancel. And then you'll also have then your minus 1 times your plus 1, which will leave you with minus 1. Now from here, since you have x squared on each side, you can subtract x squared from each side to get rid of it. Now from this, you're going to be left with negative 4x is equal to negative 1. As you can see, there's only going to be one solution to that. So our answer here is going to be B. Now, you don't have to solve for the solution, but just so that you can see that there's only going to be one solution, you can see you divide each side by negative 4, and you'd be left with 1 over 4. So as you can see, answer there is going to be B. But you can really just stop after you see negative 4x equals negative 1 because you know that there's only going to be one solution from there. All right, moving on to question number 15. If n is a positive integer, which of the following is equivalent to the expression above? Key thing that we need to recognize here is that we have to get the nth square root of each of these two terms, right? I'm going to put the two different terms. One's going to be in blue, one's going to be in orange. We've got to get the nth root of each of them, to, and then we got to multiply. All right, so I'm just going to show you how this is going to work out. So first things first, we've already got the nth term, or the nth root of 3. So we can just leave that, right? Now all we got to do is write the same format for our term that we marked in blue. So let's go ahead and do that. So we know 2 to the power of 2 over n gives us our nth root of 2 squared. We know 2 squared can be rewritten as 4. Now from here, what we got to do is we have to multiply our two numbers beneath our nth root together, and that's going to give us our simplified uh, term here. So that's going to be n then, the nth root of 4 times 3, which we know is 12. So our correct answer here is going to be the nth root of 12. Okay, so that's just kind of a rule that you need to know for the SAT math section. All right, so answer for 15 is going to be D. Moving on to number 16 now. So we've got several values of x and their corresponding values of y are shown in the table. A linear equation that represents the relationship shown in the table, uh, x equals k, where k is a constant. What's the value of k? All right, so this question is probably going to trip a lot of people up, even though it's really simple. But the reason it's going to trip you up is because of how simple it is and the fact that you probably haven't looked at a question like this in a long time. So you've got the value of x being 2 throughout all of this table. Okay, You see that your y value goes from 0 to 1 to 2, but x is all staying the same. What this means is that you have a vertical line at x equals 2. So if I was to draw this on a graph, we're going to have blue represent our x and y axis, and we'll have orange represent our line. Our line is going to be at 2, and it's just going to be a vertical line. Okay, So that's how it would look graphically. Now for the value of k, the value of k is going to be 2. So the way that this graph and the way that this table would be represented in an equation would simply be 
x is equal to 2. So our, our, our value for k then is going to be 2. All right, moving on to number 17. If 12x plus 6 is equal to 4x plus 8, what is the value of x? In this case, what we got to do here is just solve for x. We're going to subtract 4x from each side. That way we can isolate x and keep our coefficient in front of x positive. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to subtract 6 from each side. When we do that, we're going to get 8x is equal to 2. When we divide each side by 8, we're going to isolate x. We know that 2 over 8 equals x. We can simplify 2 over 8 to 1 over 4, and our answer is going to be 1 fourth for 17. All right, let's do number 18. In the figure, triangles A, B, C, and D, B, A are right triangles. What is the cosine of B? Well, I see I've got angle B right here. Okay, so to find the cosine, we're going to need the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Well, we see our adjacent is going to be 6. We see our hypotenuse is going to be 10. Therefore, our value for the cosine of B will be 6 over 10, which is equal to 3 over 5. So 3 over 5 will be our answer for number 18. All right, moving on to number 19. A system of two linear equations has no solutions. That's a key part of, the, part of this question. The graph of one of the equations in the system shown in the xy plane, the second equation in the system is a times x minus y is equal to 1, where a is a constant. What's the value of a? In order for there to be no solutions, we have to have a different y-intercept, which we know is going to be true. Now we have to have the same slope as well. So we've got to have the same slope. So let's go ahead and identify our slope. We see that as we go 4 to the right, we are going up from negative 1 to 4, which is an increase of 5. So our slope, which is going to be represented by m, is going to equal 5 over 4. Therefore, the value of a, if we move down here, we want to get this in slope-intercept form just so it makes a little bit more sense to you. So I'm going to add y to each side. Now, when I add y to each side, I'm going to have y plus 1 is equal to a times x. From there, I can go ahead and subtract 1 from each side if I really wanted to, or if you want to do that just so visually you can see it a little bit better. Now, from there, you see that you've got y equals ax minus 1. You know your slope's got to be 5, 4. Value of a must be 5 over 4. Okay, so our answer for the value of a is going to be 5 over 4. Moving on to number 20 now. We've got an exponential function f. The table shown, uh, shows some values of x and the corresponding values of f of x. The function can be written in the form f of x equals p times r to the power of x, where p and r are constants. What's the value of r? All right, key thing we need to understand here. This function is exponential r in an exponential function is going to be our growth factor. Okay, so how much are we multiplying each time as we increase by our x? As we can see, we start with 9. Okay, so 9 would be p. If I was going to write this as an equation, it'd be f of x is equal to 9. Now for r, we see that we are multiplying by 4 thirds every time we increase our exponent, which is x, by 1. Okay, 9 times 4 thirds is going to give us 12. 12 times 4 thirds is going to give us 16. So r has to be 4 thirds, okay? And then obviously it'd be to the power of x. So our answer for the value of r would be 4 over 3. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to like and subscribe. In addition to that, if you're gaining value from my content and from my channel, please consider donating. It helps me to be able to continue to put these videos out for free. In addition to that, if you're looking for private SAT prep, college essay editing, or college admissions consulting, be sure to check out my website. The link is in the description.